welcome to the course on introduction to electrical engine lab lecture 32 today on the topic of electromechanical energy conversion i will like to start from outline with the introduction of this topic then talk about energy conversion process in electrical equipment or devices then we'll talk about magnetic field energy simple analysis of force of alignment energy balance then division of converted energy and power into electrical and mechanical system then force of alignment between the parallel magnetized surface and energy conversion in an electric field then rotary motion and followed by sole example and practice problems like coming with the standard uh, introduction well what is this electromechanical energy conversion electromechanical energy conversion is a conversion of mechanical energy into electrical energy especially in case of generator or vice versa in a motor with the aid of rotary motion typically rotary electrical machines or translatory typically linear motion and linear machines and actuators and electrical machines typical example of motors and generators solenoid actuators and electromagnets are generally called electromechanical energy conversion devices and the typical example is here that we have electromechanical energy converter i mean where the typically with the motion which could be rotation or circular motion or translation motion in a linear typical motion and you have a input one input either mechanical or electrical energy or on another side also we have a mechanical or electrical energy so one side it is of you can call it electrical another side is a mechanical energy and it converts from one form to another and is capable most of the devices are capable of you can call it reversible process of such energy conversion the typical example here is the developed motion can be either linear or rotational linear motions are example here with the actuator on the left and linear induction motor on the right um, like so these are good examples of electromechanical energy conversion like or this a typical example of electric motor application i mean shaft is loaded here so a rotary motion can be developed from a motor and with the application of electrical energy at the motor terminal the rotation is developed and the shaft can be loaded to obtain the torque to do the mechanical work then the typical applications of this electromechanical energy conversion device is uh, the based on the applications the order of energy conversion that is mechanical to electrical can be properly applied so first is mechanical energy converted to electrical that is we call it normally uh, system we call it generating generator application and electrical to mechanical energy we call it motor applications like and it is capable of course doing both the job like the typical example of course of generating typically is a wind power based generation which have reach a single unit of 10 megawatt generation capacity with the help of this turbine of course in many system we use the direct i mean coupled the generator on turbine or many cases we have used the gear because generator designing the generator as you can see gear here at high speed the size of the machine or generator get reduced and which reduces the weight as well as losses and increase the efficiency of this wind generation system like i mean so we have a here mechanical energy to wind turbine on this blade by wind blowing and then we convert of course this into electrical energy through this wind generator and of course we have other accessories also like a typically transformer and other part of it here and as well as blade for turbine the other application of course is hydroelectric power generation i mean you can just see here the water flow is there on the turbine blades on wicket gate and on the same shaft we have a generator which consists of stator and rotor and uh, typically this generate again mechanical energy uh, which are provided by water flow into a electrical energy another example is your gas or steam power generation in thermal power plant uh, and uh, this also generate the from mechanical to electrical energy like another example is typically here is wave powered generation so energy generation can also be done through non rotational motion as you can see in the wind generation here like um, sorry wave generation in the sea or ocean like um, in many ways like as you can see the arrangement there then the another application typically is of course uh, in applications like electric vehicle the motor can be have in both motoring and generating region for regenerative braking as a and motor depending on the driving or braking modes 
and in electric motor, so it means we have a both motoring plus generating region, and that is the one of the region this electric vehicle is becoming popular where you can recover the energy dependency upon the traffic, you can recover 40 to 50 percent energy back through regeneration, I mean also in this electric vehicle like. And typically another example is typically the plunger, so linear solenoid actuator and electrical energy converted into mechanical energy in through the linear motion for a particular task for which these actuators are used. Then the other applications is like a rail gun, I mean you can just see the rail gun for providing the projectile in the warhead, so electrical energy converted into mechanical energy for the propulsion purpose of your rail gun. I mean this is typically the piece of kind of we call it rail gun along with the armature or so. And then we have here typically the macro scale electrostatic motors, I mean which are typically the applications I mean which have been developed by University of Wisconsin, I mean like by a startup this is a small tiny electrostatic motor, several motors of macro scale which are connected in typically in a way that they give the same uh, torque on the same shaft and it work very well as a kind of large number of motors are connected in parallel. Then the other example is typically of electromechanical system, micro scale electromechanical called MAMS and it is an electrostatic motor and actuators here the typical examples are here. So, all these are electromechanical conversion devices or you have a fans for ventilation and cooling purpose. So, electrical energy converted to mechanical energy in the form of displaced air volume. So, the transformers and solid state devices component convert uh, converters do belong to the group of electromechanical energy conversion devices because they only convert from one kind of electrical energy to another kind of electrical energy with different parameters change in voltage current frequency and number of phases and conversion DC to AC current without any moving parts. So, the energy conservation principle is followed in this all these electromechanical devices. So, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, it can be merely converted from one form to into another and energy balance equation is that the function is a energy input, energy output, energy stored and energy dissipated. So, coming typically for talking about in today lecture, we will like to understand the role of electromagnetism in electrical machines, understanding electrical mechanical energy convergence in a machine understanding the attractive forces between the magnetized surface, understanding the alignment of forces between the magnetized surface and have a have an understanding of the developed rotational torque and be familiar with the operating principle of electro electrical some of the electrical machines like. So, talking about energy conversion process in electrical machines, this followed the your left hand rule. So, typically the thumb uh, indicate the direction of the induced electrodynamic force that we call it F equal to V i L in response to the applied current in a presence of magnetic field and L is the length of the current carrying conductor on which the force is exerted like. So, another is typically the right hand rule as you can see here. So, we have a velocity here and field here and we get a induced M f which causes the current to flow. So, here you can call it like a with the right hand rule middle finger indicates the direction of induced electromagnetic force E equal to V L V in with the response to applied motion with the velocity in presence of magnetic field B and L is the length of the conductor where the EMF is induced like. So, now electromagnetic machine is one that links the electrical energy system to another mechanical energy system by providing a reversible means of energy flow via its magnetic field and the magnetic field is therefore, the coupling between the two systems and is the mutual link for electromagnetic energy conversion. So, the typical example here we have electrical input or output from coupling field and then we have a mechanical system. So, one side we have electrical system, another side mechanical system and in between we have a coupling field. So, this have a like a energy conversion process here. So, magnetic field provides the hand shaking between the electrical and mechanical system and the energy is transfer, energy transfer from one system is temporarily stored in the magnetic field and then released to other system. So, typical example for motor action, the total electrical input is equal to mechanical energy output plus total energy stored in the stored energy and then the total energy dissipated in terms of the losses like. And for generator action, you can call it total mechanical input is electrical energy output plus total energy stored uh, and total energy dissipated. So, any electromagnetic system can develop a mechanical force into two ways by alignment or by interaction like. 
to the force of alignment acts in a direction that increases the stored magnetic field energy or equivalent to reduce the reluctance. For example, in figure we will talk about two poles made of ferromagnetic material are situated opposite to one another and each is energized by a current carrying coil to produce an MF and flux passes uh, from one to other like the typical example is here. The surface through which the flux passes are said to be magnetized surfaces and they are attracted towards one typically as indicated. So, this get attracted from one to another one, but here we have a uh, attraction force as well as the lateral force if they are not fully aligned. So, in figure A it will try to bring the poles closer to together since this decreases the reluctance of the air gap in the magnetic circuit I mean and uh, you can call it S is the reluctance and that is a typically L is the length of typically you can call it in between this this increases the flux for a given MF and also the stored energy. So, in another figure it also move the poles laterally as uh, cross sectional area of the air gap will increase and the reluctance will be reduced because S is inversely proportional to 1 upon A because surface area is increasing in that way thus increasing the stored magnetic energy. The force of alignment does not necessarily act in a direction of lines of force. So, applications is typically electromagnetic relay. So, when the coils is energized by a current a flux is set up in the relay core and the air gap and the surfaces adjacent to air gap becomes magnetized and are attracted hence the pulling the armature plate in the direction of indicated in the typically the figure. So, relay function is to operate switches and it is used to extensively in power system production applications and telephone exchange. So, when you energize typically you can call it the coil here then the this typically a armature which is hinge which is clamp on the hinge it you get a force of attraction on the armature when you make this as a electromagnet with that power. So, this is the basic principle of all the you can call it relay and contactors used in the power network like. So, the force of interaction can be written as F equal to B L i where conductor length is L carrying current i lying in a magnetic field B experiences a Lorentz force F recall direction are determined by left hand rule and applications are involvement of force of interaction is used to give rise to rotary motion in the electrical motor for example, DC motor, synchronous motor and induction motor and rotary machine typically the motor working on a force of interaction and the dot indicates the current coming out of the screen and x current going into the screen. So, it comes in this way and goes into that way then only the pole formation is or force set I mean develop is of this particular nature. So, coming to now magnetic field energy. So, magnetic field I mean builds are the fundamental mechanism by which the energy is converted from one form to another in electrical machines and why do most of the electromechanical energy conversion devices use magnetic fields as coupling medium and because it provides high energy density and ideally no losses. To so, consider a magnetic field of length L and cross sectional area A made of a material with a relative permeability mu r that is energized by a coil with n turns carrying a current I and producing a flux phi. So, inductance can be expressed as L equal to n phi upon I or psi upon I or n square upon S or n square mu 0 mu r A upon L. So, that is your virtually the inductance here define in this manner in terms of your dimensions as well as relative permeability and number of turns. Of course, we neglect the saturation only then inductance can be defined. So, where phi is the total flux linkage and S is the reluctance and the energy in a magnetic field is given by W f equal to half L i square or you can call it W f equal to half I phi or half I psi or equal to half f phi or a half S uh, phi square where f equal to n i equal to s i is the m f. So, in case of an air gap the b h characteristic is a straight line b equal to mu 0 h and the stored energy density given by typically w f equal to half b h or mu 0 h square by 2 or b square by 2 mu 0 and total stored energy 
is W f equal to half d h into volume of air gap and if the air gap has a cross sectional area A and length L then we can write W f equal to half d h into A L and that will be equal to half f into 5 and f equal to h L and phi equal to B A just putting the value of them like. Now you can call it a energy density W f is half b h or equal to mu 0 h square by 2 or b square by 2 mu 0 and you can just see how it is we define the typically stored energy in form of the b h curve in a linear magnetic circuit uh, because in linear magnetic circuit we say that there is no saturation like on. So, b is the flux density and h is the magnetizing field in ampere terms per meter. So, now coming with the simple analysis of force of alignment. So, let the there be a flux phi in the air gap then the uniform flux density in the air gap is then given equal to b equal to phi upon a at the a is the cross section area here and flux is flowing there. there. So, now you can say and force here you can call force and this is the x distance from here to here. So, we can call it let the magnetic poles be moved further away from each other by a small distance d x I mean by the application of a mechanical force f then the mechanical work done on the system is d w m equal to f into d x. So, since air gap has been increased by volume a dot d x then the then the increase in the stored energy field energy given equal to delta f equal to b square by 2 mu 0 into a into d x like. And now if the system is ideal with no losses the motion has taken place slowly from one point to the uh, one of point of the rest to another point the change in the magnetic en energy must due to input of mechanical energy typically the work done. So, delta w m equal to delta w f and or mechanical work we call it f d x equal to v square a by 2 mu 0 into d delta x and here delta x is cancel out d x is cancel. So, f is v square a upon 2 mu 0 and that is how we define the uh, the force of attraction between the two parallel surfaces like so, or you can call it d w m equal to f d x or d f d w f f equal to delta d w x f upon d x and d w f upon d x is less than 0. So, it means force of alignment is attractive and this force of attract alignment is given by the rate change of stored and field energy with respect to a small displacement in the position of ferromagnetic poles like. Now, coming to concept of energy balance I mean this electromagnetic system I mean we have a here the coil on a this piece of ferromagnetic material and we have armature which is tied with the spring on a uh, ring and then we have a typically a mechanical force to keep it away from this. Uh, tracted armature relay. So, energy balance equation is functional energy input, the energy output, energy stored in and energy dissipated. The operation of simple attracted armature relay is shown in the figure assuming that the initially the switch is open and that there is no stored field energy where we are not providing any MF to this electrical circuit. So, now after the switch is closed the sequence of events falls into four distinct steps here as you can see. So, step 1 is after the switch is closed the current rises exponentially as if L 1 is inductance of the coil for the initial position of the armature then the initial rate of rise of current is given by d i by d t at the t equal to 0 plus that is V upon L 1 and typically from 0 to t 1 the total input electrical energy from the source up to time t is equal to i square r loss in the magnetizing coil integrated over time from 0 to t plus stored energy in the magnetic field and during this period the armature experiences an attractive force, but the various mechanical restraints external load or force or spring prevent it from moving. So, it remains you can call it u equal to 0. So, now coming to stop step 2 from t 1 period to t 2 when the current in the coil reaches an appropriate value the armature brings to move I mean your u equal to greater than 0 when electromechanical system force of attraction F e is greater than total external force F m that is load plus a spring. So, mechanical energy is required to stretch the spring and drive the external load and to supply the kinetic energy required by the moving part. Now, 
uh, this the air gaps are reduced leading to an increase in the inductance of the alignment. This causes a reaction in the electrical system in the form of an induced EMF E and this EMF tends to reduce the coil current hence also permits the conversion of electrical energy in the and that is it is the reaction to the action. So, we get a induced EMF in the coil like because of the motion. Now, coming to step 2 for the period of T 2 to T 3. So, the armature cannot continue to move indefinitely. So, it stops eventually either by touching the opposite pole or just before and this causes the kinetic energy of the system to be dissipated as noise or heat, but some slight deformation of the poles and vibration. Now, coming to step 4 the your T is greater than T 3. So, there is no further motion of the system and inductance becomes now constant at a new higher value that is L 2 and the current increases slowly to a final steady state value that is V by R and the this final rate of rise is much less than the initial rate of rise at T at T almost equal to 0 plus since the inductance is now much greater. And this is typical here the electrical input electrical energy input we are giving delta W E and from mechanical energy of course, is delta W M and we can say here the stored magnetic energy is in typically stored energy and then non useful thermal energy that is for the loss or friction and here it is the stored energy which is delta W s which is increasing like in this for making a balance energy balance in this system. So, we can say here W delta W equal plus delta W m that is you can call it the electrical input plus mechanical work equal to delta W f that is change in stored energy plus delta W s plus delta W 1. So, or you can call it P plus P m will be delta d W f upon d t plus del delta W s upon d t plus delta W 1 upon d t. So, both electrical and mechanical energies are taken as input energy to the system and it follows that an output energy is mathematically a negative input energy and conversion process can take place in either direction. So, the action and reaction in a practical electromechanical conversion is shown here that we have a voltage applied with the current and of course, the resistance of the coil followed by the your induced EMF through which when current flow. So, you have induced EMF which is the reaction of the field and here of course, on the moving plunger we have a uh, P m that is minus F e u and with the force of F e and on this we can say P m in equal to F m u and where is the u. F m is applied here. So, so, on the electrical side the applied voltage is V and this is opposed by the reaction in the form of back m of E and the input electrical power is P e in equal to V i and the rate of electrical energy conversion is E i. So, these two terms are only equal when I square loss is negligible. So, now we can say on the mechanical side the mechanical input force F m acts towards the conversion system when applied the same electric direction as velocity u and the reaction to this is the magnetically developed force F e and these two forces are equal and opposite only when mechanical system is at the rest or move with the uniform velocity. So, the basic machine can be idealized to a limited extent by separating some of the electrical or mechanical losses at the input or output as indicated here. So, we can say electrical system that is input for motor action then after the I square losses it goes to field system and then from field system it go to coming virtually for mechanical system, but of course, in generator system it is coming from the input from mechanical system after mechanical losses and storage. And you can say here we have a electrical energy input power input and then mechanical input and that is really causes to increase the your stored energy in ideal energy balance system like. So, the ideal and essential energy balance is delta W e plus delta W m equal to delta W f and the power balance is P e plus P m equal to the D W f upon D t and you can call it useful electrical energy after removal of the electrical losses is the delta W e that is P equal to E i and useful mechanical energy after removal of mechanical losses is delta W m that is P m equal to minus F m F e into u and of course, here we have a uh, stored energy field energy which is increasing because of these two input like. So, now coming to division of this converted 
energy and power. So, taking a case of considering the attracted armature relay as shown here with the coils on the typically on a uh, E kind of the shape of core and you have a like a plunger which can move. So, the movement of armature is in the minus x direction because length of the air gap are decreasing and the inductance of the system is increasing. So, the industrial MF is equal to d phi upon d t that is d upon d t of L i or you can expand it in terms of L d i by d t plus i d L upon d t and velocity of the armature u equal to minus d x upon d t. So, now considering the general solution of the power balance p equal to p plus p e plus p m equal to d w f upon d t and at instant t we can call it p equal to e i or equal to l i d i upon d t plus i square d l upon d t and the stored energy is half l i square and taking a derivative of this t w f upon d t this will be l i into d i upon d t plus half i square d l upon d t. So, well since both might be changing that. So, now we can say using this equation p m equal to minus half i square d l upon d t or minus half i square d l upon d x into d x upon d t or equal to minus half i square d l upon d x dot minus u that is virtually d x upon d t and that is half i square d l upon d x into u and that is equal to minus f e u or from this you can say force of reaction developed by magnetic field will be f equal to minus half i square d l upon d x like for linear motion. But of course, in many devices it will be d l upon d theta for typically rotary motion. So, now coming to force of alignment between the parallel magnetized surfaces. So, you can see here parallel magnetized I mean you have a surfaces. So, if V is the volume of the air gap the field energy here W f will be uh, small w f into V or that is energy density into volume or W f into A x or equal to V square upon 2 mu 0 into A x and thus the attractive force alignment will be F equal to d W f upon d x that is F equal to B square upon B square A upon 2 mu 0. So, the overlapping cross sectional area of the air gap is x l and the length is L g. So, air gap volume is given by V equal to L L g into x. So, field stored energy will be W f equal to w energy density W f L L g into x and that will be your V square B square upon 2 mu 0 into L L g x or lateral force will be F equal to uh, your delta d w f upon d x that is f equal to b square l l g upon 2 mu 0 that is lateral alignment force between the parallel magnetized surface like. So, now coming to let for the lateral force. So, here we have of course, we can say the depth is l of this surface and l g the air gap and motion is in this direction lateral direction with the direction of x it is shown and force applied typically for develop is b square l l g upon 2 mu 0. So, polarity typically the positive of the above expression indicate that the force try to align the poles by increasing the cross sectional area of the air gap thereby increasing the reluctance and once the two poles are perfectly aligned then the force drops to 0 and the reverse says its polarity thereafter and poles may alignment in the other direction. So, that is also some principle of some of the electrical machines we will talk about later. So, coming to now electromechanical energy conversion with electric fields as a medium. So, similarly to electro electromagnetic field we have a even a we can have a this electromechanical energy conversion system with electric field, but normally we have a all most of the machines based on electromagnetic field because electromagnetic field can store much higher energy with the same level of you can call it the flux density as well as your field strength. So, here of course, even many one example I have given you from University of Wisconsin about the electrostatic motors. So, that is basic concept goes in this manner that you have a typically two uh, you can call it like a uh, plates here between which the force is there and you have a typically the different dimensions and direction of movement of the plates which is if one is the moving plate, one is the fix you can call it capacitor another is. So, for a parallel plate capacitor if x is the separation distance between the plates and a the cross sectional area of each plate. So, e that the electrical intensity is minus V upon x into A bar, where V is the potential difference between the plates and A is the unit vector in the direction of 
typically the x. So, if total charge on the top plate is q equal to d a that is rho a upon x into v where d is the uh, eta into e is the electric field intensity in centimeter uh, coulomb per meter square and then the c equal to uh, eta a upon x like. So, electric energy stored in the capacitor is w equal to half c v square and according to Coulomb's law there is a force of attraction between the two plates assuming upper plate is fixed and lower plate is movable. If the lower plate move a distance d x in time, time d t then the change in electrostatic energy in the system under lossless condition is d w equal to minus equal to d w i minus d w mechanical and where d w e is the change in the stored energy in the system and change of input energy that is d w i equal to v d q and d w mechanical is equal to f d x. So, where f e is the electric force acting on the bottom plate thus f d x will be equal to v d q minus d w e and the difference in the stored energy and change can be written as d w e equal to d w x d x into d x and d w e d v into d v. So, d q will be d q upon d x into d x plus d q upon d v into d v. So, substituting these equations, so we get the force equal to in bracket v d d q upon d x minus d d w e upon d x plus uh, v d q upon d v minus d v d w e upon d x into d v upon d x. So, electric field intensity in the region between the two plates is constant. So, d w x upon d w upon d v upon d x equal to 0. So, f e equal to v into d q upon d x minus d w e divided by d x like. So, this equation is a general equation to define the force acting on the charge body with the constant electric field for a parallel plate capacitor that is q equal to c v and d q upon d x will be c d v up d v upon d x plus v d c upon d x and from this e from equation. So, we can write d w e upon d x equal to half e square d c upon d x plus c v d v upon d x. So, therefore, for a parallel plate capacitor uh, that equation well can be written as f equal to half e square d c upon d x how our d c upon d x is minus eta a upon x square. So, v it becomes like v d d q upon d x equal to d q v upon d x that is 2 d v upon d x and w equal to half q v in a system with two conductors. So, f equal to d w x upon d x where potential is held constant like. So, so the f e will become half eta into a v square upon x square and that is half to eta a into q square and negative sign highlights the fact that the f is a force of attraction and here is the special cases. The case 1 is an isolated system and the charge is constant. So, the rate change of charge with the displacement is 0 and electric force acting on a conductor is f equal to minus d w e upon d x and second, second case case 2 the system with fixed potential. So, free charge exists on the surface of conductor and each conductor is maintained at a fixed potential by means of external sources of energy. Now, coming to examples of rotary motion because majority of machines are of rotary nature. So, in rotary machine can be analyzed by replacing x by lambda where the, the angle of rotation distortion and u by omega velocity into the speed in radian per second the angular velocity of the motor. So, here we call it the force that is d d w f upon d x and here we can call it torque that is m equal to delta w f upon d d delta or here the velocity u equal to d x upon d t that will become omega equal to d theta upon d t and the torque of a rotary machine is given by m equal to delta d w f upon d delta. So, that we can call it the torque developed in rotary motion is m equal to d w f upon d lambda where m is used to symbolize the torque of a rotating machine and angular, angular velocity symbol omega r is the unit of radian per second and electrical machines the speed is often measured in revolution per second or per minute. So, hence the angular, veloc angular speed symbol n or n r unit revolution per second is omega r equal to pi n r. So, here we have a, a simple rotary motion where lambda is also defined and you are all typically LGN with the two pole construction of a straight run rotary so on. So, simple machine that demonstrate a torque of alignment is shown here in the figure 
and if the rotor is displaced through an angled lambda, it experiences a torque which tied to align it with the stator poles and static torque is calculated from a same relation m equal to del d w of 1 d lambda and the field energy field energy density is in the air gap is given w f equal to v square upon 2 mu 0. So, that is air gap and it will assume that only the gap energy need to be considered. So, this uh, total energy is therefore given by w f equal to 2 v square a l g upon 2 mu 0 and b square l into r into l g and bracket b beta minus lambda uh, divided by mu 0. And such machine will not produce continuous rotation, but it can adapt it to do so. So, typical example for a taking a example of reluctance, single phase reluctance motor, we excite this uh, typically the you can call it the stator by a coil mount on it with the AC current and then the typically the you can call it the position is omega r t into minus alpha under steady state turning condition and typically uh, that is the two pole structure here. So, for continuous motion the assumption is required that the reluctance varies sinusoidal with the rotation of rotor and a sinusoidal voltage is applied to the stator coil giving a rise to a flux that may define as phi equal to phi m cos omega t and as the rotor rotates the reluctance will vary and minimum reluctance occurs when the rotor center lie in coincidence with the direct axis as shown in the uh, axis of in the figure. And now, you can say reluctance curve showing the sinusoidal variation between the these two limits as you can see here how the reluctance your S 1 and S 2 are shown. S 1 is constant, S 2 is a twice a function of your typically of your theta or it comes as a cos 2 lambda and you can see phi square and d lambda I mean calculated from that. So, here S equal to S 1 minus S 2 cos 2 lambda or you can written it right here S d plus half S q minus S d minus half S q minus S d cos 2 lambda or half S q plus S d minus half S q minus S d into cos 2 lambda, but phi equal to phi m sin omega t. So, phi square is phi m square cos 2 omega t or half phi m square into 1 plus cos 2 omega t and also d s upon d lambda will be now taking derivative of this will be your S q minus S d into sin 2 lambda first term is constant. So, that will be 0 derivative of that. So, now you can say m e that is the torque half phi square d s upon d lambda or equal to half phi m square uh, in bracket 1 plus cos 2 omega t into s q minus s d into sin 2 lambda or equal to half phi m square s d s q minus s d in bracket 1 plus cos 2 omega t into sin 2 omega r t minus 2 alpha or half phi m square s q minus s d into sin 2 omega r t minus 2 alpha plus sin 2 l omega r t minus 2 alpha into cos 2 omega t or equal to half phi m square s q minus s d into sin 2 omega r t minus 2 alpha plus half sin 2 omega r t minus 2 omega t minus 2 alpha plus half sin 2 omega t minus 2 omega t into 2 alpha. So, if omega r not equal to omega r omega all the terms within the last group of bracket becomes time variables with mean value of 0 if omega r equal to omega then the expression becomes m equal to half phi m square s d s q minus s d into sin omega t minus 2 alpha plus half sin 4 omega t plus minus 2 alpha plus half sin 2 minus 2 alpha. So, only the last term is now independent of time consequently the torque has an average value other than 0. So, m equal to half phi m square s d s q minus d into sin 2 alpha that is the torque the rotor now can rotate at a speed determined by the supply frequency if rotation is to be maintained. You can call it now the M e that is the torque develop is half phi m square uh, 1 by 8 phi m square s q minus s d into sin 2 alpha. The rotor can rotate at any speed determined by the supply frequency. The additional double and quadrature frequency pulsating torque are produced having no net effect and a machine in which the rotor speed is exactly fixed by the supply frequency is of the synchronous type and finally, it will be noted that the torque depends on the rotor position. And another representation of energy conversion in rotary motion shown here with the coil of same. So, the reference here is we call theta r equal to 0 then g equal to g max and rotor is in vertical position 
and theta x r equal to 5 by 2 then g equal to g minimum that is rotated in the horizontal position. So, reluctance force or torque is developed is dependent on the current in only one the winding and is the result of variation in the reluctance of the air in the magnetic circuit carrying the flux which links that winding. So, assuming that the mobile member rotates at angular displacement and angular velocity of theta r and omega r respectively, the expression of magnetizing inductance as a function of theta r can be derived as follows. The voltage is V equal to r i plus d lambda upon d t, where L m inductance t of function of theta r is n square by r m as a function of theta r, where lambda is your L i L l leakage reactance plus L m magnetizing reactance into i that is a flux linkage and R m theta r is L upon mu 0 that is the mu into a that is the reluctance like. So, if theta equal theta r equal to 0 the mutual reluctance that is R m is maximum since the air gap has a maximum value in this case the rotor is in vertical position hence L m has a minimum value in this position. So, L m 0 is n square upon R m at angle of 0 which have a minimum value and when theta equal to pi the opposite to the 0 position the mutual reluctance that is R m is maximum since the air gap has a minimum has a maximum value. So, in this case the rotor is vertical position and the opposite position L m has a minimum value and this L m equal to n square upon R m upon pi has a minimum value. And if theta equal to pi by 2 the mutual reluctance that is R m is minimum since the air gap is also minimum value in this case the root is horizontal position hence L m has a maximum value in this one. So, L m at 0 is n square upon R m pi by 2 has a maximum value and this is you can see the variation how it looks like L m with the uh, average value of L a plus with the amplitude of second har uh, harmonic component in with respect to theta of L b. So, the same situation occurs at theta r equal to 3 by 2 and pi by 2 hence L m theta varies with the maximum and minimum positive value twice per revolution of the rotating member that is the rotor and the approximation of magnetizing influence of elementary reluctance machine is given by the following graph as shown in this case like. So, we, where we can say L m theta r equal to L a minus L b cos 2 theta r and L m 0 equal to L a minus L b and L m pi by 2 is L a plus L b and self inductance may be expressed as L theta r equal to L l plus L m theta r and L theta r equal to L l plus L a minus L b cos 2 theta r. So, so, the torque developed by a rotary system can be obtained as t equal to half i square d upon d theta and thus the torque exerted on the rotor of a reluctance motor is t equal to minus half i square L b into sin 2 theta. Our theta can be expressed as theta equal to omega m t plus delta where delta is the engineer position of the rotor magnetic axis with respect to the stator magnetic field axis and the torque experienced by the rotor now can be written as t equal to minus half i, I square L b sin bracket 2 omega t omega m t plus delta for sinusoidal variation in the current i, I equal to i m cos, cos omega t. So, thus the torque developed by the reluctance motor is t equal to minus half i square m i square L b into cos t square omega t into sin 2 omega m t plus 2 delta and that is equal to t equal to minus 0.25 L b into I m square sin 2 omega m t plus 2 delta plus 0.5 sin 2 omega plus omega m t plus 2 delta that minus 0.5 sin 2 omega minus omega m t minus 2 delta. So, it is obvious from the above expression that an average torque developed by the reluctance motor is 0 unless the speed omega m equal to omega and delta is not equal to n pi. So, n equal to 0 1 so, average torque is T average equal to ha minus half L b i m square sin 2 delta and that is maximum at pi by 4. So, the flux linkage and the voltage equation for this reluctance machine can be written as V equal to R i plus D lambda upon D t, L lambda is a function of i theta r and L theta r i and D lambda in a function of i theta r d t equal to D lambda upon d i into d i upon d t plus D lambda upon d theta r d theta upon d t. So, D lambda i upon d t will be delta lambda i theta r upon d i into d i upon d t plus d lambda upon t delta theta r delta t upon d t and that is you can say d lambda upon d t equal to l, theta l into d i by d t plus i d l theta upon d r into d theta upon d t. So, this d l upon d t d lambda upon d t will be l l plus l a minus l b cos 2 theta r into d i upon d t plus i minus l b minus 2 sin theta r into 2 d 
theta upon d a d t r upon d t equal to and v equal to r i plus l l plus l a minus l b cos 2 theta r into d i upon d t plus 2 omega r i d l b into sin 2 theta r and lambda will be equal to l theta, l theta into i and that is in back to l l plus l a minus l b cos 2 2 theta r into i. So, now coming to for rotary machine of doubly actuated machine, uh, a machine of the electron type discussed previously has many disadvantages. The most important which is the fixed speed and the weak pulsating torque and these can be attributed by the manner in which the torque is produced to so, reluctance machine also the relay are singly excited system and only stator and rotor are stator or rotor is excited by a current carrying conductor that is a case of singly excited rotary system. Now, we have a doubly excited system you can see we have a coil on the rotor as well as stator that we call doubly excited system. So, most of the electromechanical electrical machines are doubly excited system. So, in order to strengthen the attraction towards the alignment both rotor and stator can be excited and this term by a doubly excited system. So, with the arrangement the stator and rotor each have a two magnetic poles and such machine described as a two pole machine. So, there are important family of doubly excited machines like synchronous machine, asynchronous machines and DC direct current DC machine. And this is the typical example of synchronous machine where the you have a bi excitation you get the electromagnet as NS pole on the rotor and stator we have alternating. The rotor physically move with this and stator is having alternating current like and you just getting a uh, force of attraction between the uh, electromagnet produced by the excited AC excitation of stator and between the uh, rotor DC electromagnets like. Um, so, that is example of doubly excited machine and this is another example of your element is asynchronous machine that is skull cage rotor that we have a stator we excite three phase alternating current and because of relative motion we have get a induced voltage in the rotor conductor which are sorted that is also produce a rotating magnetic field and then two fields get attracted together as a rotating magnetic field. And here is the elementary DC machine, so stator is we can have electromagnet or the magnets on stator and the armature we just have a commuter and this we change the direction of current for the armature with the help of commuter and brushes arrangement as you can see here. So, all these rotating machines are the doubly excited machines like. So, now coming to with the sold example, coming to question 1, the relationship between the total flux linkage and the current in the coil for the magnetic circuit shown in the figure is given as lambda equal to 6 i divided by 2 i plus 1, Weber turns determine the energy stored in the magnetic field for a lambda varying from 0 to 2 Weber turns. So, solution from as shown in the figure form the relationship between total flux linkage and the current coil is i equal to lambda upon 6 minus 2 lambda and thus the element stored energy in the magnetic field will be or w m equal to 0 to 2 that is lambda is varying lambda into d lambda divided by 6 minus 2 lambda that will become 0 0.648 joules like. Now, coming to an example 2 an electromagnet is, is made using a horse cow so core as shown here and the core has a effective length of 600 millimeter and cross section area of 500 millimeter square and rectangular block of steel is held by electromagnet force of alignment and a force of 20 newton is required to free it and the magnetic circuit through the block is 200 millimeter long and the effective cross section area is your 500 millimeter square. So, the relative permeability of the both the core and block is 700 if the magnet is energized by a coil of 100 tons estimate the coil current. So, here coming to the solution there are two air gaps in the magnetic circuit hence the force to part the circuit members is double in the one group. So, F m equal to 2 b square upon a into 2 mu 0 that is b square upon mu 0 and that is 20 newton meter. So, from which we can find out the b equal to that 20 into 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 divided by 500 into 10 to power minus 7 on root of that that becomes 0 0.22 Tesla and h equal to b upon mu, mu r. So, that is 0 0.222 divided by 4 into 10 power minus 7 into 700 that is 250 ampere tons per meter considering the mu r equal to 700 and now mmf will be hl that is 250 into 600 plus 200 into 10 power 3 that is 200 ampere tons that is ni or 100 i and from which we can find out here i equal to 200 upon 100 that is 2 ampere. So, now coming to the 
example 3 the poles of electromagnet are shown here relative to the steel bar and if the effect of leakage flux may be neglected estimate the force of alignment that acts laterally on the steel bar due to each pole. So, all the data are given here flux is given 5 millibar and air gap length is given 1 millimeter and typically you can call it the uh, the alignment is 100 millimeter of steel bar with the length also of 100 millimeter with the typically of another one of 50 millimeter. So, there is no lateral force of alignment at the left hand pole since the motion is on either direction would not change the relativeness of the air gap hence the there can be no change in the field energy stored in the air gap. So, there is a lateral force of alignment at the right hand gap given as b equal to phi upon a that is 5 into 10 power minus 3 divided by 5 into 10 power into 100 into 10 power minus 3 that is 1 tesla and uh, f equal to b square lg into l upon 2 mu 0 that is 1 point uh, square into 1 into 10 power minus 3 into 100 into 10 power minus 3 putting the value of 2 into 4 pi into 10 power minus n. So, this becomes 39.7 Newton. Now, coming to typically example 4, a cylinder relay shown below is operated from a 110 volt DC supply and 5000 5, tons coil resistance is 5.5 kilo ohm. The core diameter is of the relay is 20 millimeter and the gap length is 1.5 millimeter. Uh, the armature being stationary, the gap faces may be taken as a parallel and the permeability of the paramagnetic parts as a high, very high. Estimate the gap flux density, the coil inductance and the pull up, pull on on the armature and data is given here uh, that you have a typically diameter of 20 millimeter uh, and here LG is 1.5 millimeter. So, coming to the solution here I equal to V upon R and you have been given 110 volt and resistance is 5.5 kilo ohm. So, it comes 20 into 10 power minus 3 ampere and F equal to M equal to I n. So, that is 2 20 to 10 power minus 3 into 5000 that is 100 ampere ton and H equal to F upon L g. So, it becomes like 100 upon 1.5 into 10 power minus 3. So, it becomes 0 0.67 into 10 power 5 ampere per ton meter and now B equal to mu 0 H that is 4, 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 into 0 0.67 into 10 power 5. So, it becomes 84 into 10 power minus 3 tesla that is 84 milli tesla and phi equal to B into A that is 84 into 10 power minus 3 into 10 to power 10 square into pi into 10 power minus 2 it becomes 26.3 into 10 power minus 6 Weber and now inductance is pi into L upon I. So, that is 26.3 into 10 power minus 3 into 5000 divided by 20 into 10 power minus 3 that is 6.56 Henry. Now, the inductance is inversely proportional to the gap length L g hence the in general the variable x so L equal to 6.56 into 1.5 divided by x and d L upon d x will be minus 9.86 divided by x square or minus 9.81 divided by 1.5 square or that is minus 4.37 Henry per millimeter or minus 4370 4, Henry per meter. So, magnetic force F equal to half i square d L upon d x to so half into 20 square into 10 power minus 6 into 44370 that becomes 0.88 Newton. So, positive report would indicate that the, it is the force of attraction same direction as the velocity of the moving part. So, now coming to the example 5 in the electromagnetic relay shown here excited from a voltage source and current is I and flux lambda are related I equal to lambda square plus 2 lambda in bracket 1 minus x square where x is less than 1 find the force on the armature as a function of lambda. So, you can call it the change in field energy due to the infinitely small change in flux linkage d lambda at a current i as a function of lambda is the d w f equal to i d lambda and the total field uh, energy at flux linkage l lambda equal to w f equal to 0 to lambda d i d lambda where i is given lambda square plus 2 lambda minus i. So, it comes of half one third lambda cube plus lambda square into one minus x square and f f will be minus delta d w x upon d x that will be two lambda square into one minus x and that is magnetic force of alignment typically an attraction here. So, coming to the question example 6 the magnetic field and density on the surface of iron surface is 1.6 tesla which is a typical saturation level value for magnetic material find the force of force density of the iron phase. 
So, solution is let the cross sectional area of the iron face is A, consider the field energy in the air gap volume con contained between the two parallel faces separated by distance x. So, W f b x is a half b square a x upon mu 0. So, mechanical force due to field is f f equal to minus d delta W f delta x and that is minus half b square a into mu 0 and mu, mu and negative sign indicate that the force acted in a direction to reduce x and it is attractive force between the two force faces and the force per unit area is equal to half b square upon mu 0 that is half 1.6 square divided by 4 pi into 10 power minus 10. So, it becomes like 1.02 10 to power 6 Newton per meter square. Now, coming to example 7, the magnetic circuit of figure is excited by 100 tons coil wound over the central leg. Determine the current in the coil that is necessary to keep the mobile part suspended at a distance of 1 centimeter. So, what is the energy stored in the system? The relative permeability and density of the magnetic material are 2000 and 7.86 gram per centimeter uh, cube respectively and dot all data are given here. So, solution the permeability of paramagnetic magnetic material is constant. So, reluctance uh, concept can be used to determine the inductance of the magnetic circuit when the mobile part is at a distance x then equivalent circuit is shown here with the different reluctances with the excitation here and we can see where the R 0 is your 6.167 into 10 power 5 ampere per uh, you can call it and R G equal to 7.956 10 to power 3 x 80 upon uh, w and R C equal to 2.1188 10 to power 80 upon w and R T total will be R C plus R G plus 0.5 R 0 plus R G equal to 5.272 10 to power 5 plus 11.937 into 10 power 9 x and hence the inductance L equal to n square R. So, it becomes 100 square by divided by 5.27 into 10 power 5 plus 11.937 into 10 power 9 x that becomes 1 upon 52.72 plus uh, 1193 700 x and magnetic force acting on the mobile part is f field equal to half i square dl upon dx. So, f field becomes half i square d upon dx of 1 upon 52.72 plus 11193700 x and this becomes minus 596850 divided by 52.72 plus 1192700 x square into i square. So, negative sign indicate that the fact that the force is acting in the direction towards the magnetic structure. So, therefore, the magnetic magnitude of the force of attraction for x equal to 1 centimeter is f field equal to 4.15 into 10 power 3 Newton. On the other hand, the force due to gravity experienced by the mobile part having a volume of 11 centimeter square is f equal to mg equal to 7.85 into 10 power minus 3 into 11 into 9.81 and 0 it become 847. So, for the mobile part of the stationary, the force of gravity must be equal to the magnetic force. So, equating the two, we obtain I equal to 14.28 ampere. And inductance of magnetic circuit X equal to 1 is 83.4 micro Henry. Thus, the energy stored in the magnetic field is W F equal to half L I square. That is equal to 0 0.5 into 83.48 into 1 power minus 6 into 14.28 square. That becomes 8.5 millijoules. So, coming to example. 8, the upper plate of parallel capacitor is held stationary while the lower plate is free to move. The surface area of each plate is 220 centimeter square and the separation is 5 millimeter. Determine the mass of an object suspended from the lower plate that can be that keeps stationary when the potential difference between the two plates is 10 kV. What is the energy stored in the magnetic field? To keep the lower plate stationary, the net force acting on the plate must be 0, the mg equal to Fe and Fe equal to minus half eta a v square upon x square. So, f e or f equal to minus half eta a v upon x square that is keeping the value minus half 10 to power minus 9 divided by 36 pi into 20 into 10 to power minus 4 into 10 into 10 to power minus 3 divided by 5 into 10 to power minus 3 square. This becomes 35.37 into 10 to power minus 3 Newton and m equal to 33 35.37 into 10 to power minus 3 divided by 9.81 and becomes 3.61 into 10 to power minus 3 kg and energy in the system is W f equal to half C v square that is eta a upon 2 x v square that is 1.177 micro joule. Coming to example 9, the region between the parallel plate capacitor is 
partial filled with the dielectric slab and the capacitor is charged at a potential of V volt and the width of each plate is W and the dielectric slab is then withdrawn uh, to a position shown in the figure and derive the force tending to pull the slab. So, coming to here the energy stored in the capacitor is W E equal to half uh, integral d E d V and half eta W d v, up, v upon d square into bracket eta x plus b minus x and potential is held constant. So, f equal to w upon 2 d into eta in bracket eta r minus 1 v square and the force is in the direction of increasing x. So, coming to example 10 an actuator consisting of infinitely permeable yoke and plunger excited by a sex, section of medium iron boron magnet and the excitation winding is of n equal to 15 electrons. So, dimensions are w equal to 4 centimeter w 1 4.5 milli centimeter and d equal to 3.5 centimeter d small d 8 millimeter and g 0 is 1 millimeter to find the x direction force on the plunger when current is in the excitation winding 0 and x equal to 3 millimeter calculate the current in the direct excitation winding required to reduce the plunger force to 0. So, here it is a typical figure of the what we were talking about the plunger and the total magnets in the part of the body of it and it is the equivalent of magnetic circuit. So, DC magnetization characteristic of medium iron bound can be represented by linear relation B equal to mu 0 H minus H C that, that is B R plus mu R into H where mu R is equal to 1.06 mu 0 and H C dash is equal to 9 minus 940 kilo ampere per meter and B R equal to 1.25 Tesla. The magnet can be replaced by a section of linear material of permeability mu R and as the equivalent winding of ampere turn the n equal to that is minus H D into D that is minus in bracket minus 9.4 into 10 power 5 into 8 into 10 power minus 3 that becomes 7520 ampere turn and based upon this the equivalent circuit of the system becomes of that of figure 2. There are two sources of MF in series with the three electrons and the variable electrons R x the field fixed cap electrons and the magnet electrons R m. So, R x equal to x upon mu 0 w 1 d R 0 is g 0 upon mu 0 w d and r m equal to t small d upon mu 0 w d. So, now with i 1 equal to 0 the actuator is equivalent to a single winding system whose co energy is given w field equal to half l i square l i 1 square and a half equal to n i square equivalent to r x plus r 0 plus r m and the force of plunger is given by now f field equal to delta field upon d x that is n i square equivalent divided by r i r x plus r 0 plus r m square into d r x upon d r upon d x and there is minus n i square upon mu 0 w 1 d plus in bracket r x the r 0 plus r m square and substituting the given value f field is minus 703 Newton and the, the flux in the actuator is proportional to the total effective ampere turns acting the magnetic circuit thus the force will be 0 when the net ampere turns equal to the 0 and it means i 1 equal to n i upon equivalent to n r n 1 and that is 750, 7520 divided by 1500 that is 5.01 ampere. Now, with the example 11 the current intake of a 2 pole reluctance motor at 60 hertz is 10 ampere and minimum and maximum value of inductance are 2 Henry and 1 Henry determine the rotor speed average torque developed by the motor. So, motor speed is omega m equal to omega equal to pi f that is 377 radian per second or 3 or 3600 rpm and average torque developed by the motor is t equal to minus 0.125 lb into i m square sin 2 delta and that is equal to minus 0 0.125 into 2 minus 1 into 10 into root 2 square sin 2 delta that is minus 25 sin 2 delta and average torque developed is 25 newton meter when delta equal to 45 and there are some practical uh, practice problem which you can solve in the similarly as we discussed the example and these are the sum of the references from which we have developed this lecture material and thank you very much.